they hated me <laughs> in the comments. I hate you. I hate you. I, I don't know why, but I was just say that again, Hiller. What a weird barometer. Uh, <laughs> That's a measure mean, like of measurement success. of success. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hate it on. I thought um, the, um, I thought the mentally off balance line was so funny and, uh, for standing for Mal O'Brien, mentally off balance, and <laughs> for someone, I see somebody that, hating you for that. <laughs> but, but how, how? Like, how serious are That's you, a good dude? Kevin Ogar lost his fucking legs doing CrossFit. She would. I fucking. I gave fifteen years of twenty years of my life to it. And my me and my wife were fired on the same day, and I've and all I did was glorify women. I have people on the internet calling me a misogynist. Like so Mal O'Brien got to rip like that. <laughs> oh, Mal O'Brien. I had three kids at home. Mal O'Brien, dude, I hope she thinks it's funny. Like I want it makes me when someone says that they hate me for it, I want to completely rebrand her. <laughs> I mean that M she has M O B. It's Mal O'Brien. It's cool. It's cute. Everyone likes her. I have no, but it's still funny that she left. We don't know why. We're just assuming like someone said I hate you on the internet and it fucked her up. And uh, so the mentally pressure. off balance. It's funny. It's 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 it's. I don't think anybody said that to her. What just I you, hate you. They, they just hate you. Oh, I know. I well, I know. I just made yeah. it up. But we, I, that's what I mean. Nothing even happened to her. She got to keep her sponsors and shit. People. Yeah, well, that's yeah. why she has to come out and say, "I'm not competing this year." <laughs> I got labeled as the most toxic man in CrossFit when I got fucking fired. <laughs> Not not a single one of my coworkers sent me an email or text saying, "Hey, sorry, Sevy, thanks for how much." It's a lot sporty, Beth. Hey, look yeah. at it this way. There's a lot of people that go through their whole life and never get labeled the most of anything. Right. I, I'm. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not playing a pity party. I just think it's funny that. Um, how does I? I just don't understand how that would upset you. It's. It's not even that dig. It's not even that. It's funny. It's not a. It's not a dig. It's not even. Yeah. yeah. It's not a dig on Mao. I don't think. I mean, if you think that's a dig, what were we saying the other day? Oh, um, so so, so you you know um uh, the um uh, John Woolley from Make Wads Great again. He he made a he made a post yesterday, or he made a post yesterday that caused me to go over and watch Chase Ingram's show. And Chase Ingram was uh, John Woolley was basically made a statement that the games were um. Bull, the the title of calling the fittest the fittest on earth was bullshit, and so Chase Ingram then responded, um, saying, "Hey uh, John, uh, you're way off base here. CrossFit basically Greg defined it, and he went through the whole thing, right? As as, as any level one CrossFit expert would. Hey, he defined it, and it clearly is the fittest. And I'm I'm kind of surprised that you missed the mark on that. It wasn't aggressive at all. No name calling. I think maybe Bill, the co-host." told Wooly the dipshit or something but it was mel like dude something that me and you or me and Susa would fight about any day like you it was I. yeah like you and i would have a conversation that was every day i have a conversation with you that's more aggressive than the conversation i think that happened between chase and Wooly. whoa whoa like whoa, the, whoa whoa yeah. you're saying there was a conversation uh, uh, uh interaction Internet. discourse back and forth there sure, you go sure sure but then Wooly, but then Wooly, I'm gonna tie this to Mal. But then Wooly attacked Chase on the internet and and invoked his tagged his boss. Yeah, that's some bullshit. So me and you are arguing over what the fittest means and if the fucking CrossFit title is valid to call Fraser the fittest. And then Wooly runs and tells his boss, dude, that's not cool. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm really trying to like, like put it into the perspective of something else. I'm trying to apply it to another situation. It would be like if the president of the United States said he doesn't like Costco or he doesn't agree with uh, wholesale foods. And then Costco said that uh, Donald Trump. Are you guys having a Costco debate night now? I, I always drink <laughs> Costco. I, I love Costco. What the fuck? Don't ruin Hiller's Costco metaphor. Oh, Go on. I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I'm reaching here, but it'd be like, I don't like wholesale foods. And then Costco is like, hold up. This is the worst president ever. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you not like, we, oh, we, we're in the United States and we are a wholesale foods brand. You can't do this. We, we pay taxes in your country. Some guy, do you know who Chase Ingram is, Hunter? 
No, who's that? He's a he's been around forever. He's the um he has a show on YouTube called Get With the Programming. He's a staple in the CrossFit field. He's he's like been he was a games athlete. He's the probably the number one or number two commentator in the history of the sport for four CrossFit. He's a, he's a cool uh, Chase Ingram, tall, good looking dude out of Texas, owned an affiliate. He he works over at HQ. He's a re- he's a he's a staple in the community. He's a good dude. He's the best. And he got into a he got into an argument. Um, uh, uh, back and forth with um, That's yeah, this right guy, there. yeah, big dude swimmer. Anyway, he got into an argument with a guy on the internet, the Make Wads again, great again guy, and um. The make wads great again guy then tagged his boss, Chase's boss. And I was like, hey, that's not cool. Is that that bald fucker? Yeah. It's like, hey, I if Chase would have been like, hey, douche, dude. That guy's a douche. You don't tag someone's boss unless they're like threatening to hurt you. Why do you say that, Hunter? That's one of those kind of guys where you invite him on a yacht party and then all of a sudden the boat sinks. You're like, oh, what a tragedy. (laughs) We Um, don't believe (laughs) we don't we don't believe in coincidences. Um I don't know, man. I've just like hung out with him and he just, I, I think he's like an insurance broker or something douchey like that. And he, <laughs> he, um, he's just one of those people who got a channel that got like a little bit too many followers. And then his ego got way too blasted up. And when I hung out with him, I felt like he was like, he had like that kind of behavior type. Like he was like doing cocaine in between conversations, like really kind of so antsy and excited about everything he was saying. It takes one to know one, dude. I mean, I've done a ton of blow. I'm not going to lie, but there's people <laughs> Like that, that uh, kind of freak me out. Like the snake oil salesman kind of characters. I don't know if he's selling anything, but he freaks me out. How many followers he's a did baker. he take? How many followers did he tag- take before you became a douche? Go ahead. Sorry, Hunter. Go ahead. But he tagged his boss. That's dirty. Yeah, that's it. And he, uh, Chase did wasn't like, hey, your wife's a whore or I'm coming to your house to beat you up. It was just like, hey, dude, uh, basically Matt really is the fittest based on the definition Greg gave. And so you have it all wrong. What you said. That's it. Not in any name calling nothing. And this dude tagged his boss. Well, not only did he and tag hey, his boss, yeah. but he put him I in a that. position to have to like, like it was, he was like, is this the culture that you're talking about to change? And then tagged his boss. So it like put yeah. him in a position to have to like either defend or go against Chase. That's it kind of creepy. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chase, what are you doing with this cult? What did you say? It's all my fault, by the way. Well, uh, usually. I, usually. Is that, is oh, because the video uh, you made. I yanked yeah. a clip off of a podcast for kettlebells and cocktails, and I thought it was great because I, I what I heard was that he started CrossFit because of the elite fitness component and pushing yourself. And then Chase gets caught up on the fact that at one point he calls it bullshit, which is, you know, crap because it isn't bullshit in my opinion. In a lot of people's opinions, it's what it is. And then they, they started fighting. I'm like, damn it, guys. This wasn't the intention. <laughs> I ended up doing something pretty petty this weekend. Uh, it was the Super Bowl. Oh, I can't like, wait. I can't wait for this. Great, great intro. <laughs> it's kind of similar <laughs> to this. So we go, and I've been going to this party for years. I'm like, you know, it's just a party that all the guys in Malibu go to. It's just wild and crazy party. And, you know, we get there and it's such a big party. They have to have security. They have security like 200 yards away. They have security 100 yards away. They have security at the door. And... Wow. Do we know security. whose house it is? Is it someone rich it's or nobody, someone it's nobody famous? Fan. He he's somebody who services all the fam- uh, famous people, okay. and he just um. So we get there, and the security guard who's seen me a bunch of times. It's not like I'm not like a not like memorable kind of person, but you. He gets there and he's a total douche to us. He's like, "Is your name on the list?" I was like, "Here's my name." He's like, "Why aren't your friends' names on the list?" And I was like, "Dude, you know this is how this happens every single time." And he was a total dick to us. And I was like, okay, I will remember this. Hmm. So I go into the party. I find out his wife's there. The security yeah, guard's wife. Oh, yeah, you, banged like, you banged her. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah. you're right. Please tell me you fondled her. Put you put the no, tip in. no 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 no. But it's I went out of my way. Stuff. I went out of my way to spend a large portion of my night hanging out with his wife and getting oh, that's nice. her, uh, getting to make sure that she knew who I was and how fun it could be if we hung out more often. And oh yeah, I wasn't, oh. wasn't going to do anything truly, but I he just kept on walking to the party and seeing her laughing, hanging out next to me. And I was like, <laughs> she felt your energy. She knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not that bad of a guy. But I'm just saying, sometimes I I was like, man, what a petty thing that that guy did. And then I thought to myself, I was like, wait a second. I did the same thing this weekend. No, that's totally different. (laughs) Yeah. 
Hey, I, I would have respected Wooly way ball. more if he'd have fucked uh, Chase's wife. That's oh a tag in his boss. <laughs> to, d wait, dude, way Sensei more. Boring. Way more. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Caleb, hi. Could you pull up um, uh, Hunter's um, Instagram account? Hunter, are you running on the Malibu Highway here at a 516? Next to it. Yeah, that's crit. That next What's to it. Five sixteen. It. Yes, there's only he's running a five sixteen mile, talking to the camera while running on the fucking Malibu Highway. But now you're not in Malibu. Yeah, this is well, crazy. I mean, I was in Malibu two days ago. That's when we filmed this, and we're Are now. It. How so far did you keep that pace? Did you really keep a five sixteen pace for a mile? Oh no, we did five oh fives. How that, do you know that? Because I have a watch that. that tells you the information. It's Math. pretty interesting. Science. Science. <laughs> Dang. Technology. Uh, yeah, so what we do is we do four by eight minutes with a four-minute drift in between. So your idea is you double the distance of what you're technically running in the race, and you're holding this pace. And the reason why that was a 516, that was actually a 505 for eight minutes. And the reason why I was just a little bit slower is because I was still drifting out of my last mile. So it kind of took the combinations of the two times, but yeah, now I'm, I'm over 200 pounds and I can run two miles under 10 minutes, which is pretty good. And why different colored yeah. shoes? Uh, it's a, it's like an ad thing by Puma. It's like kind of their new swag move, which Love I appreciate. Puma, Puma, Puma. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, I, I don't say it properly. Um, so. and I'm still running my headphones fall off right here. I'm still running in wired headphones because I tried the um, the AirPod thing and I just hate them. I cannot stand them. They suck. <laughs> I don't know why that technology is so shitty. They're always dead. You always lose them. And they always fall out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey so, so pro, dude. how did you get down to the highway? What do you mean? We just ride down the hill. Um, on, so this is bikes? really not, this is really not the highway. So behind this is Malibu road. This is where I do all my training at. I've been running on this road for eight, nine years. That's not the and, ocean right to your left. Just right. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is the highway. No, 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 no. So PCH. So Malibu road kind of just is underneath Pepperdine. So PCH is right here. Then there's Malibu bluff park. And then there's a road just underneath it where we do our training. But yeah. either way you're running on the one. No, not on the one. I'm at Malibu road. How could it not be the one if the ocean's right there? Man, I'm, I'm going to try to explain this best. Would you mind just pulling <laughs> we need, up we need a map. Malibu Road <laughs> on maps just so we can really contextualize what's going and, on and right now? Just, just so people know, the reason why I want to know is because that's you a see tough Malibu spot. Road right there? Look at that, yeah. right there. There's PCH. There's Malibu Road. That's where I do all my interviews. Sorry, oh, you know, interesting. Uh, okay. Air yeah, yeah, yeah. And where's the breakfast spot? Marmalade? Yeah. Marmalade's amazing. So that's over here on the right, right next to that like whole UPS thing over here, a little bit further okay. over. Okay. You type okay. in marmalades across the street over there. The best. Okay. You're not as gangster as I thought. Okay. I thought you were running on the highway just doing that shit. No, I have to run from on the highway to get there though. So if you go over, zoom out a little bit, go to the left, go to the left a little further. There should be a Latigo Canyon right there where over there on the right a little bit. There you go. That's good, it. Good work, Caleb. Damn. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I see it. I park my car right here at the bottom of that and PCH, and I have to run all the way over. And trust me, it is 100% a death-defying act. And then I go all the way over to Malibu Road, and I start my intervals. Why? Damn. Why do you choose there? Um, It's like the flattest. Okay. It's close to my house. You know what's funny is someone really famous sees you running every single day. Oh yeah, like really famous. That. Are you talking about yeah. yourself? I'm. No, I just I'm, know. I know that no, area. I mean, that's like everyone go, is there. Go up a little bit on the right here, just maybe a couple feet over at the end of this field. Go to the end of this field, a little bit over. Okay, now you see that massive house right there with the tennis court. That's yeah. Cher's house. So for many oh, years, yeah. I would get done with my intervals and I would stretch right in front of her house across the <laughs> Porco and hope that she would just like open the gates and be there waiting for me. It has what's not the, happened. What's the oldest woman you've um, had intercourse with? Biggest age difference. <laughs> or bo both. Um, Biggest age difference and oldest. You ever slept with a 60-year-old woman? Um, I'm not going to do anything, but I'm just going to use my hands. 
Oh wow, that's cool. Okay. Mm. Yep. I love yeah. Mm. Yeah. Quick, wow. quick movements. You gotta be quick yeah. movements. Was she famous? <laughs> no. Gotta move quick. Gotta move Did quick, you, guys. Was it charity? I, Did you feel like you were doing charity? Were you gentle? I'm doing the Lord's work. Lord, yeah. <laughs> crazy, dude. I'm doing the Lord's work. Um <laughs> I actually always wish that I had an older girlfriend. I actually now like it's super weird. When I was younger, I was always dating up, like way, way up. And it was so much fun and everyone was so nice. And it was such like a great experience as far as dating went for, as a young guy. You mean like you were 17 and they were 23, like, which is no, a big no, 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 deal. No. I'm talking about no? like early twenties and double my age. Wow. Like, oh, wow. okay. Wow. He's over yeah. there in divorcee land. Nice. Well, that's all Malibu. Dude, it was kind of just a, a situation like that I couldn't control. You can't <laughs> afford to live in Malibu at the age of your 20s and 30s. I was there just based like uh, off of like, you know, someone else's fortune. And you, you're you just left with very few options. So I was dating older chicks. And now that I'm, you know, in my 30s, I'm dating all like all my girlfriends are younger than me. And it's the best. No, they young change. chicks suck, don't they? Young chicks suck, don't they? No, 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 no. no. This is an unpopular no. opinion, but I'm going to share it <laughs> briefly. Yeah. There's this point where like a girl reaches an age, and guys too, but I'm just saying I'm not dating guys, so I'm giving you the data on girls. <laughs> uh, I wish I was dating guys, but God, God <laughs> so didn't bless easier. me with that gene. Yeah, <laughs> there's just this fear that you like. They there's two there's two factors. I've said this before. They show up and they've had a lot of like bad relationships and they're upset. Or there's this other thing where they're just in fear when their next relationship's really going to pop off. And then like, it's just projected onto you. You're like, I, I can't solve these problems. I just came here to have a date. Um, <laughs> You're talking about older women? You're talking about no, older girls, women? Like, right at my age. Girls right oh, at my age. Oh, 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 your age. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just don't you think that um, uh, in general speaking that girls under 25 are just dumb as fuck? No, I mean, it depends on the person you find. It really does. Uh, I, I understand. I understand. I'm talking about generally. I'm just talking about the, the, the 90%, 90%. I'm finding that it's about across the board, all ages around the world, that all people are idiots. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's entirely ruined my you life. You don't discriminate oh, at all. Owning a business has entirely ruined my life. And I just started because I now have to have communications with everybody and figure out what they're doing all day. And now all of a sudden I've just recognized, I was like, wait a second, everyone's an idiot. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. don't, I don't, I, and, and by dumb as fuck, I don't mean that as an insult. I just mean like nothing you want to like put your penis in. I mean, just like, well, it is maybe that. No, not at all. It's too, probably you know? the opposite. You, everybody wants to probably sleep with girls at, at that age, you know, fountain of youth, a lot of beauty, all that kind of stuff. It's what you have to put up with to get there. That's and what I mean. Obviously, yeah, but I, I haven't really run into that issue. Like, there's a there's enough common sense at this. Do you point think it's because you hang out with athletes? Because you hang out with athlete in athletic in people who persevere anywhere are cooler than people who don't persevere. You think that's why? You did because you date chicks who go on uh, runs instead of TikToks. I've actually recognized it's a pretty bad idea to date female athletes. They're usually crazy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Which part? How? What's crazy about them? Well, here's my opinion. Once again, probably not going to get a lot of fans out of this, but usually men, like if you put a bunch of guys in a room, they're going to just, they, they can't help themselves. They'll pick up rocks and see the first person who can hit a tree, who can run to the mailbox the fastest, all these kind of things. It's just like hit kind of inherent, inherently inside of us. And then all of a sudden, usually like it's very uncommon to find a girl that has that competitive gene. Usually girls have been kind of pushed towards being competitive. And now all of a sudden they're into that lifestyle and I feel like they they're there not because not ne necessarily that they want to be, and they built this like overcompensation of being very competitive. Like guys, like I have on the other side of this wall, there's four guys right now getting ready to go do intervals with me. After that, we'll probably arm wrestle. After that, we'll throw axes in the backyard. After that, we'll do all this. So there's gonna be like ten to twenty things throughout the day where we're gonna compete against each other without even organizing it. We'll just it will just happen. In the female world, it doesn't it doesn't usually happen like that, as far as I've witnessed. And usually, when you get those athletes that come in and get pushed all the way to the top, when you get to meet them there, you're like, "Oh shit, this person's wound up." Not to say that I'm not, but I'm just saying usually on the female side of things, I've noticed that a lot. 
it, 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 and another thing is, is also is like you could be training with those men and I could look over at you and be like, man, your fucking nipples are tiny hunter. And it, you'll never think about it again. But if you say that to a girl, she might take that to the grave with her as like some sort of like, 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 like you damaged her. Isn't that a good thing? Which part? The tiny part. I, that, that's the thing. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter whether it's good or bad. That's the thing. Yeah. It doesn't even, who knows? I it's like just, all it's just a thing. I have no, it could be good or bad. And that's not I a have good no, um, it's a fact you commented on her body. Yeah. I felt, I feel movement in my pants every bodies. time. I feel movement in my pants every time Hunter moves the banana you, close to his mouth. I, I did a broadcast about a year ago where I was doing a broadcast for the sport of high rocks. And I discussed the women's body types and how they differed and how they were creating different kinds of oh, no. influences and opportunities in the race. That that whole world was. flipped out on me. They're like, you misogynist, how dare you categorize those women and their bodies? Crazy. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? Yep. People are idiots. Like bodybuilders get up on stage all the time. You're like, look at that glute development, the lat size. But, and but all you were sudden, saying stuff like, hey, those shorter legs are going to be difficult in the broad jump. Those legs, I, that's going to be her. She's going to be easier because she has shorter arms and the those chest to bars are going to be easy because she has those huge titties. You were just stating facts. 100%. I'm like, she's way off balance because the knockers are so huge. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, I'm just saying. I wasn't anything like that, but the emotional disposition of the world these days is just so flimsy. You can do you can do anything to them and they'll collapse. Yep. I'm surprised they didn't flimsy. tag your boss. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Did they tag your boss? Right. <laughs> point I love um, the I'm so lucky, dude. I have no boss. I do worry from time to time because the brands that I work with that that like I'm gonna get in trouble, but I'm not doing anything with bad intentions. Like, you know, I work for Puma. I love Puma. Puma. We have great relationships with them. I don't think I'm doing anything to truly hurt anybody, but you know, the wrong person on the staff could look at something and I said and say that I'm a risk. Um, represent hey. the company that I work for as far as clothing goes. Those guys are bad to the fucking bone. They're they'll they're ride or die. So Who, what's the, the name of the brand? Them. Represent. That's the ten thousand dollar jacket brand. Dude, hold on, wait a second, dude. Look at this fucking pony. Are you oh. jealous? Yeah, you. that's cool. That is a hundred percent me. These are my two side pieces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's the Hunter McIntyre sweater from Represent. I can't. I can't confirm or deny such things. Wow. Hey, Hunter, what did you think about speaking of um, uh, flimsy and flat? What did you think about Drake's penis? I didn't get to see it. I googled it and it was immediately down. Was it good? Was it a nice oh, dick? It, it's. It's just. It's. It's like rubbery. It's. It's weird. It's. It's a. It's a. But I really liked how he addresses it as the Apollo rocket. It doesn't look Is like it, a real penis. Wait, what? It's big. It's big. It's a bit. Yeah, it's a big. It's a big penis. But just the way it's like he's watching porn and it's like flopping around and shit. And it's weird. It's no good. I heard, I heard, it's like a coke. Rumors, it's it's what I imagine. It came out about it is that he supposedly the reason why it was what it was because he's had plastic surgery done to it. I don't huh? know. I I don't know what to tell you. That's all I heard. With the, the only thing that was aligned with the entire conversation is plastic surgery involved with his dick. As I eat my banana. White's banana. <laughs> How many bananas are you going to have this morning? Many as it I'm takes. Three. I got to eat three. <clears throat> hey, um, so you're at the mountain. You're at the mountain pad. Oh yeah. Three bananas. I'd pop. Cold, That's crazy. Man. Hey, <laughs> you now have the world record for pairs and singles. Crazy. Congratulations to you, dude. That is so wild. Thanks, brother. Tell me about the um, the doubles. You, you did it once with a guy, and you guys missed it by 12 seconds, as I recall. Yeah. And you trade then, him in? Yeah, that's the question. What's that? Did you trade him in, your buddy? Yeah. Well, so here's the thing also. The original categories we were doing was called what's open, so it's technically the female weight, and we were doing it. Now we're up, we did, they just released pro, which is male weight, and that's what we just set in world the world record in. It was only, they only do it at world championships. Now it's in. But our time was so impressive. We're the third fastest time, I think, in history, even with pro weight. It was a freakish, it was a very freakish result that we ended up doing. And um, I'm pumped about it. I think doubles actually, you know, once again, I don't run, I don't have any affiliation with High Rocks as far as their business strategy goes. But I, I'm hoping that they start to have what's called the double season and then the single season. So like it would almost be like, remember when CrossFit used to do like the team championships, the affiliate, like whatever. what Jr. does, D teams yeah. of a team Crash Crucible versus Crash Crescendo. One of them's individual, one of them's team. You want them separate? Yeah, I, I think that'd be perfect. And they're not doing that, but 
we could have like a fall doubles series and then we could have the world championship for singles in the spring, spring, summer. And you like it's that a, because then you could compete in both. Yeah. It's far more exciting race, by the way, far more exciting because you're Double. able to one put down way more power. There's all different forms of strategy and it's fast. Very fast. Uh, um, yeah. So g going back to what Hiller was asking you, why did you trade in your partner? Why not stick with the partner you had who you already have like one, one experience with? I mean, he's a good guy. He just doesn't have the horsepower. You know, he was a sub four minute miler. And, but the thing that like a lot of people run into, uh, Great. a lot of people run into with these issues is that they just can't, they can't hold horsepower. It's like the difference between like a power lifter, like an Olympic lifter and a CrossFitter like that Olympic lifter may be able to lift like, you know, 50 more kilos on the bar, but that CrossFitter is able to hold 90% capacity for long periods of time. And for our sport, you know, running fast isn't going to fucking cut it. You have to now all of a sudden get onto a station and sprint and push really hard, change energy, energy systems, muscle groups. The guy I ended up racing with, Michael Sambach, that guy over there on the right, you can tell he's a buff motherfucker. He's like a big, he's a big dude and he can, his body is big enough that he can hold horsepower where a smaller body just gets overloaded quick. Careful talking uh, about men's bodies. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, Braylon Tender Fitness Competitor, $1.99. Uh, Mr. McIntyre, <laughs> what's up, bro? Reach out for some free coaching. Wait, this guy's a creep, dude. This guy's a super big creep. I think this wow. is the guy that comes onto our show now and has a men's group. Yep. Yep. <laughs> why is that <laughs> creepy? Why is that creepy, dude? No, hey, listen, no, listen, no, no, Hunter, no. Hunter, humble yourself, buddy. I see the holes in your training, Mr. McIntyre. I'll be happy to hone these skills for you and get you to the CrossFit Games in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, this guy's really good. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you I'm should see the this guy's athletes, dude. It's a fucking I, crazy. Oh, we, it's a who's had, who for sure. Yeah. We had to we had to block the guy, and then all of a sudden he had oh. other people coming on. Yeah, look, clock. Clock's his other person. So oh. these people they have like this little side hustle. I think they're all in Pakistan, and there's a bunch of guys around a computer right now typing and messaging. Hunter, these dude, are my just, people. Be gentle. These yeah, are you gotta my embrace people. him. Just embrace him. These are my retarded like cousins and nephews. Yeah, I love all these. This is I my. Yeah, have they you just, ever they seen that bit for the show? What are you talking about? Do I like him? I love him. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, um, have you ever seen that that picture of the guy who goes into like the deep woods of Georgia and takes a picture of um the ancestral family? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's bring like up that David picture real White quick. Like I that. guarantee these are the people sending over these coaching things. There he is again. You should see my stable of absolute horses who's all ready to compete, dude. I will tie all the horses <laughs> to the back of me and I'll drag through them the fucking dirt. This is definitely a dude. Hey, look at this. Oh, this is great. We pull the leash off and let the men run. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is good. This is good. I can't wait to attend it. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, these yeah. guys. These are the guys with computers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what is this? That's the one you've that just barked. This? Hiller, you've this never is, seen this group, this dude? Such Meet the Whitaker. Meet the Whitakers inside America's most inbred family that speaks and grunts. This isn't true. Show the image, dude. dude. Show the image of him. If you listen Come to on. the interview of the photographer who, yeah, these yes. are the guys who are commenting on your page right now. These yeah. are they're good horses. Wait, so oh, on, you've never seen this? No. Are they really good at something? Or dude, no, no they're it's... not really good. They're all fucked up because they're, they're complete incest. The dude in the red doesn't even speak. He just barks. Oh, my God. The interview of the guy who took the picture is insane. Yeah, what's his name? David something, I think. David, I, I think his channel's called White Underbelly, and they go Jeez. into these like rural uh, uh, places and interview these people. But he's had a relationship with this group, the Whitakers, for like some years now. Do and you guys want to hear a crazy on, story? Off of their property it was nuts. Is yes. there a sixty-two-year-old woman in it? Oh, dude, we just got sloppy tips. We uh, troll. we troll you with we troll you with love, Hunter. Let us love you. See. I think they that's another wanna, one. They of just want to gag. Yeah, they just want to gag on it, Hunter. Let them gag. Don't this be. This guy's gonna train it out of me. I think this guy's trying to be my daddy. <laughs> Whoa, Jay. Hold on, I do want to hear your funny story. I do want to hear your funny story, caller. No, hi. it's not funny. It's crazy. Oh, hello, caller. So, dude, a couple oh, weeks ago. There's a caller. Wait, can you give me one second? Can you give me one second, Hunter? Sorry, give me one second. A couple weeks ago, but give me one second. Let's let this guy. Chime in here. People love the callers. Callers Please are so popular. Contact oh my issue God, dude. Remember that, remember that crackhead that you had on the show with Hiller and I that one day? You, you mean Will Plummer? 
the guy who you get you get the guy you got on TRT and couldn't stop flexing and jumping up and oh, down. Oh no, Gary. Oh. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> I will never get that time back. My brain <laughs> is still rattled from that day. Dude, I love Gary. Holy shit. He's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in karate moves i'm like what the fuck i was like i cannot lovin's. imagine who this guy's wife is i guarantee she wakes up in the morning and puts on all these like mma pads and just walks out and lets her husband just beat the shit out of him she puts earplugs <laughs> in and just like all right here we go all right here we go another day yes, start feeding him sequel at like noon to calm him down oh my God. tell me tell me this crazy story hunter <sighs> all right so I literally, um, so uh, this is crazy. <laughs> I've taken mushrooms and hallucinogens hundreds of times for fun because life should be fun. And I, I believe that I have more experience than like anybody I've ever encountered with these things. Cause I've just taken it so many times. Like, you know, it just be like, yeah. Okay. Now, I'm not saying I'm guaranteeing it's right. I just haven't encountered people with as much experience as me. Have you been on this show while you're on them and we didn't know? No, 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 no. Okay. I, I don't okay. use them like that. I don't like walk around and eat them like Skittles. Okay. But <laughs> so who does. I'm sure you do. Those are the people that I don't trust. Uh, so <laughs> basically, you know, there's in, in, in L.A. or at least in this community out here, it is very big to encounter people that are shamans. And they hold space for you. We'll take mm. you through this experience. We'll walk you through to the next, like the next dimension. We'll have this awakening. You know, it's everywhere. And you just like want to throw up. And uh, basically, I'm going to have to turn off these comments. Uh, so <laughs> basically, I never really liked it. Whenever I encountered somebody like that, I just cringed a little bit. The, you know, immediately just my, my shades went down. My earmuffs went on. So about a year ago, my buddy introduced me to a guy who's a shaman. And, you know, this is not – he's just like a regular shaman. Like a a wizard? shaman. Shaman to the stars. And I was like, all right, whatever. You know, probably just somebody who's hand-holding some, some rich people. So I don't think anything of it. We have conversations, so on and so forth. And then it's my buddy's birthday coming up back in November. And I was like, I would like to, you know – take care of her, you know, um, get you for whatever your services are and, and puts our buddy through an experience. Like I'd really love to give him that. And he's like, let's do it. Didn't line up a couple of weeks ago. We figure out that we can just come do it at my house, just a group of us friends and everything. And I'm just expecting to go in there and have a good time, have a good old fashioned thigh slapper. <laughs> and what are you, you know, doing? Do Mushroom? Think... What, what, what hallucinogenics did you guys do? Mushrooms or? It was mushrooms. Uh, it was mushrooms. And this is like in a very controlled situation, very professional. Like, you know, the guy's got a PhD in this business. And it's like, it's true. Like, dude studied it all around the world at the highest level. I went through the most profound experience in my entire life. As somebody who's had, like, had to be like court mandated to go to therapy, take medication, hundreds of therapy sessions a year type thing rehabs facilities books specialists your fucking dumbass friend mayhem mindset like i've dealt with every single person <laughs> every yeah. single person who is supposed to be a good person at this kind of stuff and they're all they do nothing they take paychecks they take your money that's what they're good at but i've really struggled to find anybody who understands anything about humanity or the human experience they read a book then they regurgitate it to you then they take your paycheck and the cycle continues. This person cracked me open like a watermelon, scooped out my insides, everything that ever happened to me, brought things to light that I didn't even know was true or I had experienced or I had been through and like showed them to me, talked me through them, like just like not even crying, but just fluid streaming out of my face kind of stuff. Just like, yeah, yeah, just unbelievable. I didn't know this was humanly possible. I just didn't. I had no clue that somebody could literally do these things and had these powers. And he didn't do it like, <clears throat> like haphazardly or mistakenly. Like he had knew what he was doing from the start. He had a strategy. He 
it was profound. It was profound. And I feel like an entirely different person. You do? Um, oh my God. I feel that? like I've been, what's that? When? How long ago? It's two weekends ago. Do you feel lighter or do you wow. feel like you want to quit? You want to feel Dude, like you I feel like quit? I have like a thousand pound pack off my shoulders. Just wow. Unbelievable. Did I can't even before begin the high rocks race. What's that? Did you do this before or after the high rocks race? After, after, after. Did it help? I wonder if this is going to oh, make you dude, a shitty dude, athlete. Dude. I wonder if he got, if he got rid of what you needed to be, to, to, uh, I wonder if he got rid of the, uh. he already had. No, I don't think so. Okay, good. Because I was All spending right. so much of my energy being upset. I was upset oh. a lot. Often. Who are you and upset I live at? a great life. Braylon Tender. What's that? <laughs> You're upset at Braylon Tender? <laughs> no. I, so wait, I how did it work? Did he just ask probing questions and just keep going deeper and was just like, like, how did yeah, he lead dude. you down the path to open, to crack that watermelon? It was one of those kind of things where it was like he put, um, it was like a really good fisherman. Like the dude was kind of bobbing the lure for a very long time mm. without me even noticing. I was like, I don't want, meh, I don't want to. Like, whatever, it's not even there. By the time you recognize it's there, you've already swallowed the whole thing. Kind of. <laughs> like, it's just like, it was crazy. And the entire experience, he wasn't really pushing me at all. He wasn't trying to pull at all. And at one point he just came up and he's like, you know what you have to do, right? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, whatever. And he's like, no, you, you know what you have to do. It doesn't have to be that hard. And it was like, something struck me like a dart. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so I had to go now into the other room and I started like writhing like a serpent and I started taking all my clothes off, ripping out my piercing, like everything. I was just like, Ugh! and what piercings, started, what piercings, what piercings? I got earrings in and I just was like, everything was coming off. Everything was like, I was just like out of it. And the dude like came in and like got me and like held me like a child for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. How it big was, was this dude? Is this like a little man, like my size? Dude. Yeah. This is like <laughs> Ant-Man holding a Goliath. Like he's not yeah, that small holy person, shit. but it was just like, it was, it was crazy. Did you I pay him I for this? Did you pay him for this? I'm sure he gets paid tremendous amounts of money. He did this as like a service, as like a, a friends. We're friends. Like we hang out. I hope he understands I'm saying this in the most respectful way possible. Like I literally, if I, I, I would sell every object that I have to go through that again. Like that Whoa. was crazy. Now I think have you I talked have to him since it happened? Totally. Totally. Guys, a he, magician. Does he know um, how profound it was for you? Yeah, and he doesn't even like take it like he's like like yeah I'm so cool because of it. he's like, yep. I'm so, oh. Why why do you go and see that person? Did you did you expect that to happen or were you like no way in hell? Not at all. This wasn't for me. It was originally for my friend. That's why I said I was just gonna have like a thigh slap. We're like let's get high, boys. And uh, and you didn't want to babysit your friend, and you knew this dude babysitted people when they were on drugs, so you brought him in. I didn't like. I just like you know my buddy had just turned forty. I was like, why not start? The next chapter of life with a little bit of a zinger. Did that Somebody, dude take any mushrooms? Did the sh shaman take any? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Hey, I want I want to see the shaman. I'm into it, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how much money it costs, and I'm not trying to sell you guys for it. I think you should pay three easy payments. The mayhem mindset right now. Uh, <laughs> uh no, Hiller, you would do those. that. You would do mushrooms with uh um with Hunter. Absolutely. Amazing. I've never done them, but I'm not afraid of them. Amazing. I can't oh, even wow. tell you guys. Would wow. you do it again with Hiller? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. If Can I could give it? anybody that experience, I would. Behind After I see what it, yeah. Can I wear a GoPro? I don't think that would help. I think no, we can both wear them. <laughs> it's not supposed to help. It's I don't think you awesome. want to watch back and see what I, I don't want to see myself in that place. I wonder no. if it would make it worse. It would ruin it. Dude, I had my other friend, my other friend to come and, and like cradle me too. Because once I had gone through the whole thing, I was like, I don't know if it's safe over here. Hey, dude, there are these people I knew that did something like what you're describing, and they were never the same. In a good way or a bad way? And uh, Well, it depends on who you ask, because I would say it wasn't the best way. <laughs> I'm sure they would be enlightened, and they'd be like, this is the best decision I ever made. And I go, well, dude, you're almost homeless. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, I have this conversation all the time where I can't decide whether or not being homeless or a billionaire is the best decision. Because, like, do you want to have absolute freedom by being so rich you're no longer on the board anymore? Or do you want to be so homeless and so free that you never have a board? 
Where exactly. where do you stand on that spectrum now? Because last time we talked, you wanted it to be so rich you were off the board. And now well, are you saying you want to be homeless because of the shaman? No, 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 no. I, I just have the conversation in my head enough. If you're not having the conversation, then you're on the board and you don't even know you're on it. No. The thing for me is, is like the thing for me is is like I want to have a family. Like I was raised in a great family. I want to continue that experience. I think it's our responsibility of human beings, if you are a good person, to continue to create good energy that's going to move forward. Like if you're a, a, a toothless idiot, like it's probably best that you stay that way and stay by yourself. But, um, you know, for me, like I want to continue that and I can't provide in in the homelessness. Like I think if I moved into the jungle and we just ate like papaya fruit and stuff like that and sat around a fire, I could totally take care of them. But being the fact that I want to be with my family and fly across the world to go see them, I want to be able to, you know, occasionally go see you guys, whatever it is, you have to have enough money to provide. Occasionally mm -hmm. see us. You always want to see us. What do you mean on the board? On the board, like a handful of years ago, I recognized like you have to be an idiot not to notice this, but no, that's rude of me to say. You said we're everyone's all, an idiot, we're all, though, so. all the time. Um it's it's monopoly we're taught this as a kid we're like we're teased with this like we're on a board we pick our pieces this is our avatar and we're all making laps and every single lap someone's losing money every single lap someone's just surviving another at every single lap there's somebody who's just destroying it and you know that's the same exact thing that's happening in this world right now and there's there's the bank and then all of a sudden somehow you always know when you play monopoly there's somebody at the bank who's just like stealing money a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and there's the people like you know it, it, it's you're taught this stuff as a kid and then you all of a sudden recognize in reality like you're like wait a second like are we out of money like no the bank's gonna give you a loan and like you <laughs> know all game, of a sudden baby. yeah so <laughs> you just recognize you're like this is all a game and you can choose to play it however you want like technically i could go bankrupt tomorrow and press a reset button the bank will give me a loan technically i'm looked at as a zero credit um you know stability but who gives a shit? It's a game. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. more invested you get, the bigger that you get, technically you have more assets and more stress um, leveraged against you. But at the same time, it's still all a game. Like I could shut down my business tomorrow. I could sell off everything that I have. I, I think about this all the time. No one can stop me. Um, so the shaman, the, right. well, he enlightened me even more. You recognize that all of a sudden through the game that you're playing, that you're seeing things in the way that you're perceived or taught. And you don't have to necessarily see things the way that you've been told to see them. It's all you a game. Can, you can, you know, you can be the, this is, this is the, the trick, right? So using, using your uh, two, two endpoints, um, the, the homeless guy sees the miracle, right? He sees the magic fucking happening everywhere and that the universe is conspiring to help him at all times. And he's completely surrendered and he's just seeing the miracle of life. But you could be the filthy rich guy and be attached to nothing. Yeah. And, and see what the homeless guy sees. It's just that. I thought you said um, all homeless people are drug addicts. I, I, said, I, said, I, I said that most of them are because well, most of them i'm not talking about homeless uh, homeless is the is just a um uh a signal it's it has nothing to do with having a home or not having a home you could be a homeless person and still be but this homeless person i'm talking about could live in a home by me but you an ascetic let's call an ascetic you can walk the earth like an ascetic like a fitness lonnie does you just walk around and you let the world take care of you you don't make any decisions and you let the world take care of you. You have no addictions. You have no demands on the world. You're in this sort of all accepting space. But you can be absolutely filthy rich and be in that spot too. And um, it, 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 and that that was uh, give everything up and you receive everything. And so mm -hmm. that's that's what you're juggling, right, Hunter? You well, you want the freedom of the homeless guy, but you want to you want the but not even you want, but you're open to the fact of being an absolutely filthy rich ascetic. Well, you can have so much money that you don't have to really play by the rules. You mm -hmm. can buy an island. They've done that. And um, <laughs> you can do weird things on the island. They've mm -hmm. shown that too. Mr. Beast. Uh, I'm not saying I want to go down uh, that route, but you just never have to really uh, abide by any of the laws. Like even during uh, COVID when all that shit shut down, some of the people that I knew that were wealthier basically just ended up like buying and creating their own schools creating their own medical systems, everything like that. And you're like, wait a second, I don't have to listen to anybody. Um, so 
by my standard, like, I'm not trying to like get so rich that I don't have to listen to rules. I just don't want to have to like uh, technically be uh, shackled by anything. You know, I technically have to pay the state every single, uh, you know, banks every single day for this property. And I have to, you know, do all that kind of stupid shit. Eventually you can get so rich that I think you don't really have to abide by any of that. It's just a game of just shifting around numbers that don't really exist. Yeah. You're always, we're always trying to just buy back our autonomy and buy back our time. Like all you want is the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it and the time to be able to have the space to do it. And all of that requires money. At least everybody's a prostitute to a degree. I've always said that <clears throat> you're always selling yourself in some way, shape or form, whether it's sexually or I'm, you know, selling my body right now for these clothing companies. But I'm, anyone can set themselves. Free. You can you. Everyone has their own sliding scale. You can just start setting yourself free if you want. Totally. You can just stop totally. paying your mortgage, stop paying. You can just let your whole shit collapse into nothing and just watch it happen. Yeah. I think but if you get so rich, you don't have to give yourself to anything. Like you own every single metric of time, you know, uh -huh. whatever it is. Like, you know, you can get so rich to the point where it's like, I don't have to wait in lines anymore. I'm just going to buy the building. But you you're still, I don't want but, the, but the, then you're still participating in the illusion. Whereas the other way, you're not participating in the illusion. Yeah, but you get to move the pieces of the puzzle, like larger pieces of the puzzle in the illusion. And when you're really rich, like if you want to time travel, <clears throat> just buy a private jet. You're going to move quicker than anybody else can on this earth. Yeah. Mm. You're going to go from from LA to New York faster than anybody else traveling any other way. Like you I just had to, to travel. I just had to book flights and I was trying to like figure out how to manage my workouts, meetings and flights over to the East coast to see my family. And the flights only leave at like 6 AM, 10 AM this, and I can only get home. I can only arrive there at 2 PM, 10 PM or 1 AM. I was like, I don't like any of those times, but I'm beholden to the system. Mm -hmm. Or you can just get so rich, you're just like, my jet lands whenever I want it to. That's right. Yeah, you own every. You're, you're so free. You're not on the board anymore. Yep. That's the goal. I think Magnus asked how much that would take. I think that I think it'd probably take about ten ten million dollars. No, 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 dude. No, because once you get it, you could you could bank ten million and you could fly you know private on a timeshare and different things like that. And it would probably only cost you like a million something a year. And as long as it was invested properly, you could pull enough return off of that to where you could probably start to get outside the game off at that level. I mean, a hundred million, you'd be fine. Thirty thousand feet, you'd be good. You wouldn't have to fucking touch anything. You could buy a city if you wanted to. I think you need twenty million is my my lowest lowest 20? watermark. That's math I've done. I'm also gonna have like 65 children. I read an article the other day. About 100 million. All of how old? Are, how old are you, Hunter? You better start. If you're gonna do that, you better hurry up. You better get on that. Dude, I'm starting soon. I'm starting soon. Trust me. Or you just have a bunch of chicks. Like, I've thought about that too. You, you no, could I, do that. You could do that in like I don't know, 60 days, easy or less. I'm excited. Matt, out. Just pump them out. Matt Reynolds, I think Sevon. I think Sevon is saying even the idea of wanting to be so rich to not want is wanting. That's still attachment. Yeah. It, I'm talking about a different there, – there's a freedom that you will only have if you do, do not have desire. And um, and, and you can be filthy rich and, and be in that spot, but most people don't – most people go the other way. Well, actually, that's why I go anyway. Everywhere. I drive everywhere for that reason. I, I don't want to leave when your plane tells me to leave. I'm just going to drive whenever I feel like it. But then, <laughs> but then I take 10 hours to drive. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, then you, you <laughs> pay for it another look way. At it, dude, no, I just get an Uber. If you look at all gurus, none of them have wives, kids, or families. They may have like concubines, um, but look at all gurus. They don't have they have like everybody, but they have nobody technically. So like right. that, I don't I don't align myself with that no desires kind of thing. I have a desire to have a family. Those people are going to have their own desires, and I'm going to provide for all of that. So you do have to align yourself with somewhat of humanity. But if you look at all these gurus. You find out about them. They're like just in these places, like folded up, sitting in the dirt. They don't need anything. They've already arrived. They're arriving wherever they need to go. They're they're in all places at all times in in, in all things. I'm not going to be that person. I don't need that kind of freedom. That's too much. I, I want to keep talking about this, but I want to hear the details of your two man race and how you guys did it and how close <laughs> you were to fucking up. And like, did you guys fight at all? And like, did you have diarrhea? And are you guys like I want, tell me some like the, the trials and tribulations? Did you guys train a lot before? What was your I, time? He was already a really fit guy, and I was a fit guy. I actually had a hard time during the race. Um, because I just set the world record, you know, about six weeks earlier, but I had just started with a coach and we were going through a power block, and it just ended up just so perfectly aligning that I could race with this guy. 
So I was as far away as I could possibly be from being where I wanted to be. So I basically stopped all the endurance and I was doing like 200 meters and power, really explosive powerlifting. I was bulking. Like I was just a brick shit house at the time. And we were having to move as fast as possible. And, you know, obviously to set a world record, um, you know, he was in really good shape and, you know, we, I technically, are you was saying like, you were the weak, weak link of the race? That's the first time I've ever heard you say that. No, I wasn't the weak link of the race, but I was a weak version of myself is what okay. I'm trying to say. Like, usually okay. I'm able to just kill my partners. I wasn't able to kill my partner this time. Like we were pretty aligned evenly, but, uh, it was my goal every single time to lead the runs and make sure that he got to the station first and did the work. And then I would do the second half of it. And, you know, I would start stations. So the way you want to end up doing doubles is it's basically someone's going to have to pull on the running and wh whoever's in front actually ends up having to do more work because it's just like this mental game of setting a pace. I don't know why it just costs more energy to be the leader. Um, and, and then you were, the, and you were the leader. Yes. Nine times out of 10, I was leading. So then you get to a station basically and your goal is it's like you have you have energy systems where you're able to kind of go into phosphagen system and you're able to just like snap in a sprint really quickly and you want to get about you know anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds of work so like a sled push for me would call, take anywhere from a whole length could take me six seconds just sprint as hard as i can get it done and i would only do a half of a length so sprint six seconds switch out sprint six session yeah so like right there your whole goal when you're doing this is just to like absolutely eradicate that thing for a handful of seconds. Do you and hold it like that I'll, just to make your biceps look big? Because that looks horribly inefficient. Uh, no. So if you look at that, what you're doing by changing the angle of your body right now, you could either have your, your imagine taking that shoulder and shifting it back behind the bars, which you could do. Now all of a sudden your center of mass is over the sled and you're using your glutes actually rather than your quads. And your quads just end up being so much more of a factor while racing. And the glutes are so much more powerful. If you get that positioning, it's a game changer. Mm, okay. All right. I'll take your word on it. Can you only do that if you're six foot one? No, you can do it. But I also have a weight, a larger frame. Like, do you see how my, my muscles across the shoulders are like bending inwards? My, my frame is able to push into the bar without having to like actually, actually having to flex into it. I'm folding inward actually. Some of these guys are so narrow. They've got the bodies of like a, like a shaved pelican. Um, <laughs> hey, here's the, here's the thing I'm thinking. About. I'm thinking about the transfer of energy from you to that sled is not so good because you're not rigid. That's what I see. But, but what fuck? What do I know? Can't even see his penis from here. He's rigid. <laughs> I'd say that, that position Dude, my, is pretty my, rigid. If you, don't, you guys can't tell because it's so big and my thighs in the way. The tip of my penis is actually pushing that plate right there. Yeah. <laughs> rigid. rigid. How close were you guys to not oh, look at Sean commented on this? Look at if you ain't first, you're last. Look at one of the what one of one of our guys, this guy. I wish I was that sled. Look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. Do you think Sleeky is a guy or a girl with those big cheeks? I'm kind of a girl. That, I it's think a girl. That, if I had to guess, dude, I think that's Hiller's second handle, and those are his <laughs> cheeks. Uh, yeah, I'm actually commenting while we're on the show. Yes. <laughs> I would too, dude. Um and, and how close and how close were you guys to not setting the world record? Oh, we beat it by a lot, but I wanted to break 50 minutes. We would have had an astounding pace because I technically want to see if in, if it's possible in my career as an individual to break 50 minutes and as double the fact that we hit 50, 22, I was like, it's going to be hard, <laughs> um, but it will get done eventually. Aren't you going to retire? Not done. You're not done. Yeah. You're not done Hunter. I've got a couple of years. I thought you were going to retire. You said that like last week. I want to retire. Oh, but you're not going to because you're too good. You it's know, fun. John Young called you the high rocks Jesus the other day. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, I think they were <laughs> talking about uh, that should be uh, a shirt. You'll get in trouble for that, by the way. They were talking about uh, sponsorships and CrossFit. And recently, Mal O'Brien announced that she wasn't competing this year. But then I think also said that she would continue posting. And then there's talk about sponsorship and CrossFit versus high rocks. And they're like, Hunter is high rocks jesus and he can't even throw a stone at the sponsorships throwing at crossfit athletes is there something That's to that good. how is it looking over in the high rocks world with sponsorships uh i can tell you right now i'm gonna whoop the fucking piss out of these guys when it comes to sponsorships in the next 18 months nice meaning they're shit right now 
No, not at all. I'm killing it. But what do you win for winning a doubles race like that? The ten grand? Nothing. So High Rocks like literally technically doesn't pay me any money. I think last year I made nineteen grand because I so won. When you say nothing, do you mean zero or it's insignificant? I made zero. I actually made zero. You won that race and got zero dollars. Yeah, High Rocks doesn't really do a ton for the professional side of it. They just it's okay. They're expanding the business. I'm grateful that they're doing well. I'm not gonna sit here and complain about it because that's just another it's a loser's mentality to complain about a game that you're not gonna be able to change. So I'm not mm. begging for money. I just go make money on my own. Um, you know, as far as sponsorship goes, like what I've recognized is like, I had a conversation with a sponsor just recently. I was like, you're no longer paying me to be an athlete because that's not the case anymore. I'm a marketing machine. I win regardless of what I post. If you guys want to just get aligned with somebody who wins that, that I do already. But as far as it goes for social media and everything like that, we're producing more content like by 10 X what high rocks does and like a hundred X of any other athlete in the space. And you guys are trying to get inside of this space and you're trying to sell your shoes because it's an untapped market. You're trying to sell your watches, your clothes. Like this company represents, they were doing very well on their own, but literally 12 months ago, you went to a race, you'd see maybe three shirts. Now you literally are seeing like 3,000. Of that population of the 10,000 people that raced when I was there, 50% of the men are wearing those shirts. It's crazy. They're representing. And I'm not saying nice. that I'm always hundred percent aligned with that, but it just takes specific marketing and strategy and you can make Oprah money. And I'm telling you right now, and I've said this many times, like CrossFit is just this stuck pig. Like it got the bow in it and it's bleeding out and it's kind of smashing through trees and grunting around. You can hear it and it's just faltering and, and flopping around. And even its champions don't want to compete in it anymore. I guess if Mal O'Brien's not competing, you can tell if, trust me, if it was doing so well, I would do everything within my power to be competing. Right now, I would say it's not doing well. Hell, it, dude, you were never winning the CrossFit games. You were never making sponsorship deals the way you do at High Rocks. Are you kidding? That's the reason you're at High Rocks. You're the best at it. No, but I'm saying like, I, dude, by the way, even if I was making tons of money at CrossFit, I would still not want to do CrossFit if this opportunity was here. CrossFit's lifestyle blows. If you ever hang out with a professional CrossFitter, they live the most boring life of anybody I've ever met. It's like a, it's like the turtle at the zoo. Like it comes out of its little rock and it eats lettuce in front of you. And then it goes back into its little rock cave. Damn, that's like <laughs> fucking cool analogy. It hey is. dude, dude, they are seriously young CrossFitter. I mean, I agree with you hundred percent. It is. They are some of the young, I don't know, but just young UFC fighters are so much more enjoyable to interview than young CrossFitters. It is, it is, they are a, um, every single time. Or more in, often than not. More often than not. I'm just saying in general, probably young people are just not enjoyable for me to interview because they don't have a lot of experience in general. Um, you, you know, unless they escape from a foster home at seven. But but fuck, man, young people like these CrossFitters who all they do is spend time on social media and train. They are lunchboxes, dude. It is. It's 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 embarrassing. I don't even want to have them on the show. So-and-so is like, so-and-so would never come on your show. It's like, dude, I've seen them be interviewed. I don't want them on the show. <laughs> Don't want to carry that load around. Holy yeah. shit, dude! Hey, they got there's no, they have there? nothing. They have nothing to share. Hunter experienced more on his last mushroom trip than the vast majority of young CrossFit athletes. I feel have experienced will experience in their until they're fifty. What were you saying? I mean, you're not wrong. I was gonna ask if you have a toothpaste sponsor. <laughs> love one. You I actually, love you know, it's funny. I don't use soap, and I barely ever brush my teeth. I'll go on toothbrush fasts. Not intentionally. It's just you travel around so much. You're like, I forgot my toothbrush. Oops. A lunchbox yeah. is like a box of rocks, a doorknob. It's just, just vapid. Nothing to say. Nothing yeah. has has nothing has nothing, um, nothing penetrating. Nothing deep. They haven't. They they only get thought. They they get thought. They don't actually do the thinking. They're those are people who just thought spontaneously come in their brain and they either react to them or don't. They've never actually thought anything. Hey, I gotta say something. I'm I am uh, about forty pages into both the Tia Toomey book and the Brooke Wells book, "Hard at the Strongest Muscle and Relentless." And so how far, much fun are you having? He's I, I had way more fun right. listening to your shaman experience than I have in those eighty pages, without a doubt. Yeah, oh. and I just felt like that was uh, on topic. 
I think they're oh, really cool. Sleeky, and them. by the way, the relentless book is way better than the hardest and strongest muscle. And it's not even close. Who's Brooks right? book's way better than Tia's Brooks, book. In the Brooks first book 40 is pages. way better so far. Wow. Uh, Sleeky got to fix that toothpaste problem. Mr. McIntyre uh, fast. If you want to impregnate chicks. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't use contraception. I just don't brush my brush my teeth. Hunter, would you write a book? I've been writing a book for a while, but then Hell I just, yeah. I've been tripping balls. I'll read you guys the first, um, the first entrance of it. If you guys want to hear it, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. 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 You guys ready for this fucking thing? Sit down yeah. children. It's time what to rip. Where, what do you think I'm doing? Uh, let's see here. Uh, um, bowl of the mountain. Hey, if anyone wants to know how deep you are, if you're like, I wonder how deep I am. The barometer is this. Every time you're offended, you're a bottomless well, and every time you're offended, that means you're not deep. That means something someone said hit you, and you stopped it because you're an ego fucking maniac. When you're not offended by anything, and you can just let things just go in and, and just bur go to the bottom of your well and get eaten by your soul, that's your depth. So when anytime anyone's offended, like that, like like John Woolley has no depth to him. He is an absolute doorknob, and that's why he's so fun to talk about because this medium is just like fabulous for talking about just superficial shit. John, Woo. he was he, John, the make the the bald guy that you said is it looks oh, like yeah, he does yeah, cocaine yeah. with young girls. Um, uh, <laughs> he like you're only you, when when someone says something that offends you, and then you tattle on your boss, you are just the shallowest piece of shit God. ever. Yeah, shit. and because you have no depth, you couldn't take it. You couldn't be like, "Oh, okay, we're sparring." You're not. You're not even a man at that point. Fuck. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Soul of a Lion, Hunter McIntyre. Go What's ahead. The name of the book. It's called uh, Bull, just, of the I, Bull of the Mountain. Bull. Bull. B u l l. B u l l. Yeah, he's a fucking tattletale. That's right. He's a tattletale. Just. He's that little kid. Snitches John Woolley's the guy. Stitches, John Woolley's the guy that um hung, ran around with the yard duty. You know what I mean? That <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Best third grade. Fucking yeah, yard it's like, duty. Hey, hey, I broke this oh, kid's arm in third shit. grade. <laughs> we were, <laughs> and uh, and uh, everyone, like that, everyone ran to the teacher like, oh, I broke this guy's arm, and I'm like, yeah, and I was gonna tell him anyway. <laughs> Fuck you guys. It's like, come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that's what third graders do, right? Oh man. Did, um, I, I want to hear how you broke his arm after I hear a uh, opening paragraph. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Opening page. Opening five pages. All right, you guys got to be patient with me. And opening chapters. Know. I'm going to light some incense. Let's go. Yeah, light it up. Okay, so Bull of the Mountain. Uh, so this is just based on my human experience. So I'll give you guys the entrance chapter. You can find books on depression, anxiety, heartbreak, or just about anything to help help guide or educate the human mind. Almost everyone struggles with some kind of mental ailment from time to time. There's a massive industry built around these issues filled with books, doctors, and med uh, medication that will help solve or at least help you cope with your issues. There's another mental disorder that doesn't get as much attention but is just as heavily medicated as the issues listed above. This is ADD and ADHD, the inability to concentrate often paired with impulsive behavior or hyperactivity of disorder, a behavior, hyperactive behavior, sorry. I was one of these kids. I was born into the pharmaceutical era of heavily medicated, um, medicating kids with too much energy or lack of focus in the classroom. From the young age of eight years old, I was put on medication daily to help me be like the other kids in the classroom. It started with medication like Ritalin and eventually made its way to up to me taking bipolar medication and tranquilizers to keep me subdued. This went on for over a decade and was eventually uh, court ordered to be taken while I was at rehab just after high school. There was no playbook uh, of guidance during this time, just a constant flow of doctor's appointments and medication that followed. I can honestly say that I'm not hurt. I'm just confused. It was a very odd way to grow up. Now that I'm older, I can clearly see that what was going on was wrong and no one stepped in to stop the continuance of this existence. We just kept on going to more appointments and taking more pills. I know that there are many people out there who've experienced similar lives even if you aren't one of these um, one of these people, you might know someone like this, and hopefully, reading this book might help you have some clarity on this life. I chose to write this book because I was told my entire life that youth, um, my entire youth, that these pills were necessary. I was told that these doctors knew best. I was told that I would be uh, this way for the rest of my life, and that I would have to find a way to balance out my life with the help of both, uh, help them both. 
I can easily say that after going to rehab at the age of 19, I can happily say after going to rehab at the age of 19, I've never taken medication ever since. Not only have I never taken medication, but I've also won 10 world titles in my sport and won and own three international businesses and live at a functioning capacity far above the non-medicated kids that I grew up with. I was able to break away from the world that they told me I would always be dependent on. The energy that they said was a distraction and an issue is now a superpower that I'm able to use to my benefit now that I was able to create a formula of my own success. If you were like this or know someone like this, the same can be done for you. Reading the books of champions, uh, reading the book of champions of our worlds have always given me great insight on how I could build a life like theirs. I'm hoping that this book can shine light for those who uh, were lost once like me. I'm not saying that I'm a doctor, but I am here to share my story and show that it's possible. These chapters paint a picture of uh, many ups and downs, a rocky path to say the least. However, I never stop trying. I never let these disorders determine how my life would turn out. I continue to see the hope and strength of my personality and the characteristics that came with it. I only wish that I had access to someone with more guidance to where out this was all going. It was very isolating, not knowing where my, uh, what my outcome would be. I was not like the other kids, and I was told that often. The truth is that things got way worse before they got better, but I'm here to tell the truth um, that you all need to hear. Being lost is okay. We we're all lost from time to time. What isn't okay is giving up. Just over the mountain of pain and suffering is a valley of hope and opportunity. You just have to have the courage to climb. No matter how messy the road may be, find your inner champion and start climbing. Done. Nice. Yeah. I think I decided, you know, I'd been writing the book for a while. And then um, after witnessing a couple things that were happening with just people that I knew and families, I just recognized that like these, these, the next generation is just getting crazy, heavily medicated and pushed into these like boxes. Like I was when I was a kid and a lot of them, dude, like I've lost like 13 friends through drugs and crazy influence like this stuff. And a lot of these kids, um, just kind of lost it and mm -hmm. they're just getting medicated with these amphetamines and crazy drugs from a super young age. Can you do a chapter or maybe two or three chapters on how you um, supplemented sex with um, to replace the, the the missing points in your life and go into detail about that? I would like those three chapters. Oh, I don't think that that deserves a place in this book. It's more for. Uh, no, people. dude, Hunter <laughs> totally deserves a place in this book. You don't think um, at, at, at 19 years old after I took my I flushed my last Adderall down the toilet and it went out into the Pacific Ocean from my Malibu estate. I was in Connecticut went, at the time, but thank you. I, I went on a crazy <laughs> sex binge, fuck, fucking washed up prostitutes and Hollywood stars for seven years straight. I didn't look exactly like that, but I do. Appreciate Come on, that. baby. <laughs> Chapter two. Dude, I, I always see like, it, why, I don't why that can't it have some sex in it? It's fun. We all know that I've had sex and you've had sex too. I don't understand yeah. why reading that page is just going to help anybody. Yeah, but my body doesn't look oh. like your body when you had sex. You look sexy even pushing a sled at high rocks. Jesus Christ. Some dude in the chat, the most heterosexual guy in the chat wanted to be this flat. That was, yeah. wasn't. Dude, are you um are you cursed with how beautiful you are? Is that a curse? Of what? How beautiful you are? Or is it a blessing? 100 percent dude. It's a curse or a blessing? That's a both. Male, oh. male model hunter. Is it is that gonna be covered in the book? Didn't you, you talk about high, are you talking about high fashion hunter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter, yeah. hunter. It was a good time. Hey, how much more do you have written? I have like almost the entire book done. Wow. Are you going to narrate gonna, it? Is there shit you're afraid your parents are going to see? Oh, sure. My parents will be slightly pissed. Yeah. <laughs> do you have the scene in there when, you your dad, when your dad tied your uh, tied a leash around your neck to the bumper of the car and drove you around? Is that in there? All of it. Hey, dude. They're probably going to be pissed off at the forward where there's like you're on drugs. I mean, there's a part there where it's kind of on them, isn't it? I mean, it's not like you put yourself on medication. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the, it's the doctor's recommendation that they went along with. And it's like, you're the influential child. I mean, a big reason why I'm writing this book is because I think so many of these parents are fucking idiots. Like they just like all of a sudden they there walk you go. and they're like, hey, you should give your kids pills. And they're like, God, I'm too busy for this. Okay, give them the pills. <laughs> um, and then they go. I'm watching it happen to a really close group of people right now where I'm just absolutely fuming with the parents and what they're doing to their kids. And I think they're fucking idiots. And Can you tell me what, what are they doing? What are they doing? Can you tell just ignore, I, I think they're ignoring like the underlying thing, which is you probably just need to go 
go camping be with your child. a more available parent. Yeah, like available yeah. parent rather than a parent that like meets them on 100% the parent's terms. Even taking your kids to practice is, is on your terms. Like I just think that people are losing human connection and – Tell me, I mean, tell I, me what's something that tell me what's something I should do with my kids to connect with them. What's something I should do? Tell me. I mean, I honestly watch you guys do a lot of it, um, which is really, really cool, but I don't really know your personal life that well. But I just think that putting kids into this system where you wake them up and immediately you put them into a classroom where they're sitting down for like eight hours with their friends, and then they have to abide by this regimented schedule, which is just like basically fucking your brain up to assume that you have to take a role like that later on in life, which is a whole nother chapter of stupidity. But I don't <laughs> think the human brain works like that. Like you're not giving these people any kind of movement or freedom. You're just immediately putting them from the box of their bed into the box of school for hours. And if you don't align with that, you're going to either medicate them, punish them or alienate them because they're not aligned with the system. They don't perfectly fit into the tracks. Now that I'm out of that system, I am a monster to the world because I am literally the pe person that makes all these people's just understandings of their reality shatter. They're like, oh, wait, there's the pill boy that's killing all of us because he didn't <laughs> follow the system. <laughs> that he didn't follow the system that we were taught. All these kids that aligned that stuff now work for my companies. Hey, like, Hunter, you know, that's yeah. another that's another great shirt, by the way. A picture of you as a kid and put pill boy. And then, the then a picture of you over here, here just all fucking jacked and shit. And just yelled. Yeah, I just the dude. Yeah. Raining down on you. <laughs> I was once a. Oh, how about that is the title of the book, Pill Boy. That's the movie, mm. dude. That's mm. the movie. <laughs> That's the movie. Pill Boy. Hey, dude, if you don't think there's sure. going to be tons of pussy in the movie, you're out of your mind. And, and then the cover could be <laughs> him pushing mind, that sled. Honey. Yeah. And just Pill Boy. I just think pill that I, I'd be totally honest, dude. I don't want, like, I. If I had to just be real about the whole, like, you know, what I've done in my personal life outside of all this stuff, I don't want to talk about that. I would like to be married someday. And the woman that I meet just think to themselves like, oh, it's the first girl that he's ever dated. Oh, my God. This pristine <laughs> penis has never seen the light of day. <laughs> hey, they, hey, listen, for people out there who are young, like, listen, listen, this is listen, to, listen to this. This is a guy who's done it all people. He's absolutely it done it all. And at 34, he'd like to walk back some of the beaver he slayed. Crazy. My sister's going to be so happy when she hears this because she's raising three boys. And she's like big, big on like save yourself until you're like married shit. And, you, and you're showing some uh, signs of that. You wish party was just like it's, it's, it's like it's like smoking. Like the only reason why I wish I would have never smoked is because I wonder what I would be like if I had never put that shit shit into my lungs or into my brain. And so you're saying that, hey, you would be okay – in hindsight with what you know, you'd be okay being a virgin right now, Hunter? Not necessarily a virgin, but I wish – I think like all men to probably need to hear this. Like do not allow this little piece of flesh dangling between your legs to completely like rule your life. And so, of us, so much of us live like that. Like I can go into the other room and start talking to guys and like within minutes women will come up. And there's nothing wrong with women. But you're just like, wait a second. And like you all of a sudden. Oh, you mean come up as a topic. You mean come up as topic. a topic. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then like the other thing is, is like um, you think about it. You, you ever just sit at a table with a bunch of guys that just can't stop talking about girls? I'm like, is that it? Like your guys' lives are entirely wrapped up in this. You do nothing else with your time. Like you and just you haven't evolved out of that chapter of your life where you recognize there's other entertaining things to do. And imagine Besides replacing girls with CrossFit. Now you have oh, that. dude. I mean, I think that's probably why um, what's his face? The guy who's a multiple time CrossFit champion is doing so poorly now. He's met his first ever girl. <laughs> Tell him. What do you, what do you think? Dude. I've already told him that. I was like, dude, Madero's just come to my house. Come to my house. I'll break up with your girlfriend. And I'll give you Are a you being serious? Do you think the vagina you think the vagina in his life has has somehow ruined him? Yeah. Ruined oh, him. Oh shit. He's put on about 10%. No, what probably, about it? What about it? percent body fat he's put on. Can you explain it to me? What about it? You think it's, um, wow. What Hiller said is crazy, think, but what about I, it? You think being around vagina and you, you need to be a, a male champion. What about vagina interferes with, nothing the to do with that? Okay. I think it's chapter 12 and, uh, uh, <laughs> something, something to grow rich. What is it? Same that book. Grow rich. Think Rank and, and grow, grow rich. rich. And I think it's like the sexual transmutation chapter. If you find mm. the right woman, you can, 
evolve yourself to become this absolute champion. She aligns everything. She takes everything that's like this and just, whoosh, you can have that. It is also the opposite. If you're like this and now all of a sudden the wrong woman will just completely take that out of alignment. And I'm not blaming women for anything. I'm actually blaming the man for not understanding this. He probably had everything in line perfectly to a formula, which made him a champion. And being that I'm one of these kind of people and do that kind of stuff, I know what it takes. Bill Lay, he does that. And if you can't get that shit, in, it's, if it's out of alignment, you're never going to be a champion again. It's not like people have gotten better at CrossFit. He's just gotten worse at CrossFit. Oh, That's a, my belief. Wow. Hey, you, you read, uh, I just started reading my first Napoleon Hill book. You like Napoleon Hill? Nah. No. <laughs> Why? Cause it feels yeah. like, cause it feels like when you're reading it, like it was written. I didn't even know he talked about pussy. You, you, you feel like it's written like in the twenties or something that it's weird. The, the vernacular. Dude, did you not hear anything that was just said? If the Who, girl me? it's stupid reference five times games, champion, Matt Fraser, it was one or the other. It's like, they make them the best thing ever. Or and maybe it was what Hunter was saying. If you find the right woman, it can turn you into a machine. If you find the wrong I think woman, I it can tear you apart. Not necessarily wrong, but it just changes you. Being that I'm in business now, like, and I get to meet all these other CEOs of other companies and we start to collaborate, they're just like, dude, if you find the one right person, your business goes from here up. Like, you don't have, it's like being underwater, like holding a rock. You're just like, now it's time to rocket ship. And the well, same hey, thing can happen within your life, like, as far as relationships go. I'll just give you a practical thing. So I'll just give you a practical thing. Uh, you 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 get up every morning at eight. You train till noon. You sleep until from noon to two, and then you train from two to six. And that's what you do. And you repeat. You're going to be great. And now you introduce a woman, and or or, or, or let's say uh, well, for I don't mean to blame women, but let's say you introduce a woman, and now seven times during the day you're answering text messages and you're answering questions about things where that you're being persecuted on based on her own insecurities. Now that's going to require energy as opposed to a woman who actually uh, supports you and it's like, hey, all of a sudden you're eating better food because she's a great role model for that or she's helping you drive to to your training. I mean in the most superficial sense, that, that's what you're saying also, right? Like is someone aligned with your mission or are they interfering with it? The the guy who's the deepest, uh, the guy who has the world record for the deepest free dive in the world, he says that even thoughts consume uh, require energy, energy and energy consumes oxygen. Dude, what are the so biggest things? When that you're I do diving that for when you're holding underwater for fucking seven minutes, you can't have your fucking brain be like thinking about whether you text your girlfriend or not, because that fucking eats up oxygen. I mean, th mm -hmm. that's the kind of minutia champions are um are, are, are dealing with. I, I was in a relationship for three yeah. years and mm -hmm. I will say I was a large part of the problem. So it's not a hundred percent one person, but <laughs> um, I got out of it and I have not been sick once since. And I have broken the world record multiple times since like it, 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 an astounding rate. Of well, at the end of the day, it's all your fault. We're, we're all our own God, yeah, yeah, but yeah. So, so I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Three, three years. Three. Wow. That's crazy. And, like it was like, I mean, this is about a year and a half ago, but like it, I became a freak. Hey dude, you guys think from the street meet that one time I saw you and that was like a year and a half or two ago. Well, I, that that's, that's like poisoning. <laughs> I'm talking about like sickness. Like, I you know, know people I'm... like I, I coach people one-on-one -on -one occasionally. There's this one guy that I work with and he's just like, man, I'm a relative. And I was like, dude, I'm fucking over this. I was like, you need to get your shit together. So I was like, make for the next eight weeks, just don't get sick. I'm not going to let you train that much. Like you just need to cut all this other bullshit out of your life and just not get sick. And he did that. He's training half as much as he usually does. And all of his results are going up because he just like started to like take shit out. And uh, I guess he, we were talking about champions before, but here, um, here's a strong, here's a strong correlate. It's, it's not a fact, but Sammy was aligned with Matt. She made his food, helped him with anything. He had no distractions. Listen, if you're, if you're, if your girl's making you food, that's a strong correlate that you have, you've chosen the right one. Bill Lee's woman makes him his food. Damn. Isn't, loves isn't, Bill isn't, Lee. Isn't Matt, yeah. uh, isn't Justin yeah, Bill Lee's wife or girlfriend, uh, CrossFit Games athletes too? Who? Hey. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Justin's girlfriend's a crazy high level CrossFit athlete too. She's not just like a good one. She's like top 50 in the fucking whoever lived. I mean, she's fucking amazing. I wouldn't Terrible say whoever idea. lived. Terrible. She's idea. in the top 50 currently. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. What? Wrong right away. Hey, well, you, Mark shouldn't be banging, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be banging another athlete. No, why is that? Not, why is not that? of that caliber. No, -uh. 
Uh uh. I'm the biggest prick on the planet because I know that I'm more important than other people that I spend my time with. Not like like my soul's more important, but my time is more valuable than their time if we're sharing time. If you get what I'm trying to say. If you do that with another person that thinks the same exact way, you are fucked. Oh. Mm. Wow. wow. Oh. Does Hiller wake up looking like a donkey's penis? <laughs> I love it's how the it's the one dude from Facebook. No, but your mom yeah, wakes Paul. Paul, but your mom wakes up riding one. Like, Tell her I said hi. Uh, what if Justin made the decision to ease off training to improve his quality of life? Now this is just conflating issues. Who cares about the quality of his life? We're talking about being the best. Yeah. What are you talking about like yeah, maybe dude, winning the up. games shut just up, isn't worth it. Sloppy, yeah, yeah. Dumb I love you, extra sloppy, but just stop <laughs> complaining issues. We're not like it's, hey, it's, it's, it's kind of on topic with what you always say. How uh what do we what do we know Justin Maderas for? What do we love Justin Maderas for? We love him for winning the CrossFit games. Yeah, he's a fucking winner. We don't he's give a winner. shits about you're not a his champion, you're real mental health. We don't care. Yeah, we don't by the and by the way, as much as I like Mal O'Brien. I, I hate her sponsors. I hate the fact she's not competing. No I hate more. like, yeah. So so like, like blown. Like I can, like like we can say whatever we want about her. No one's being mean to her. But, but she's MLB, not competing this year. And her no. and her initials are MOB. Again? And I yeah. Yep. Why? Because she's mentally because she's mentally off balance. MOB. Who's she spending her time with? Eric Rosa, the former CEO of uh, CrossFit. <laughs> no. They're at a a, a fucking a retard retreat. Wait, is, is that true? Eric Rosa? No, no, no. <laughs> no. But it, I like it. She moved to Hawaii and decided she's not going to compete anymore. Hawaii really? seems dope. Yep, but I still I have to make like obligation, like post, you know, obligatory post to keep the sponsors happy. Dude, those, she, you know, she was a shooting star. She looked completely fucking unbeatable. She was going to rain. She was. And we yeah. were all on her jock, and that's cool. Yeah. And then now she pulled out. So now we're, we're all processing the fact that she pulled out. And it's hey, like, I want to know Hunter's opinion on the Razor Camp and potentially he- leading to that. How, yeah, how much do you what? think that having the insane asylum that is HWPO headquarters led to Mal O'Brien's current state? Uh, I don't know anything about it, man. That'd be wrong of me to comment on it. It is a here's great the thing, stance. <laughs> here's the thing I'll say. It has nothing to do with HWPO. I disagree. If you're, if you're going to be part of an elite team and then you get upset about the elite standards, that's that's on you. I agree. Like you, it, it, that, I disagree. Like, why? Dude, I that's agree. why you're probably never going to be a top-level top level person. I guarantee if you go into the high – like. So my brother came from this workspace, which was the top hedge fund in the world. And they have a very, very aligned strategy with it. If you fuck up, they come in and tell you to your face and they tell you publicly in front of other people. Then my brother went to another company, which is a very successful company, but nowhere near aligned with like the success growth based strategy the other company had. And my brother made people cry just by the way he would talk to them. Like adult men would cry because Garrett, like, and it's like, you take that like, that war room mentality, which is designed for creating a war machine. And then you take the wrong person, you put them in there. It's going to cook them alive. Mm-hmm. It just is. And the same. And, exact thing, and, like, and what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. There's right, nothing wrong. Right. With I, that. Didn't, I didn't hear anything wrong with it. No, no, no. Here's the here's thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hiller where Hiller and I disagree. Fucking Matt Fraser is the best that ever fucking did it. He's the fucking wrong. man. Wrong. He's five won the games five times. Better. It was fucking hard as shit. He says, Hey, come to my dungeon and I'll do you like I did me. <laughs> and these fucking pussies like Mal O'Brien, Jason Hopper couldn't hang. Fine. But don't fucking blame Matt because you wanted to go to the dungeon and be with the fucking master. Now don't All be right. a fucking pussy. I brought you to fucking dungeon hell. You want to be a pussy? Go with fucking Hiller and Bill Leahy, and you guys can fucking focus on dunking hey, basketballs hey, hey. instead of becoming the best. Bill, Le- <laughs> Bill Leahy lives in a dungeon, dude. Careful. All right, fine. All right. Yeah, you watch that video. He lives in a dungeon. Careful. Do you remember like Miko Salo when he would just like post yeah, about yeah. being inside of a closet yeah. rowing? Rowing. Like, yeah. These prima donnas could never hang with that shit. No. I want to hear Hiller's rebuttal to what I said though. What's wrong with that, Hiller? That he's got the championship formula. Why can't? Why not just go there and become a champion? If I want to be Miko Salo, I put my rower in the closet. If I want to be Matt Fraser, I hang out in his parents' basement. I don't go yeah, to Vermont, yeah. but fuck uh, Vermont. Oh wait, he, you know where who Matt Fraser's living? Where did Matt Fraser's living in his parents' basement, dude? 
hey, I'm going to go upstairs and say hi to mom and dad. Yeah. Now O'Brien yeah. moves across the country into a freaking dungeon. Oh, where, yeah. where, where did Mal start? Oh, she that's a great point. Parents, what Hiller she said. Lost her friend, she lost her family, and, and you know did what? She she did. Wow. Your point wow. is still also right. That's a good point. Hiller said when he was in the dungeon, he could still go upstairs and hug mommy. And he is yeah. freaking chick uh, driving uh, driving all the way to his house. Yeah. Right. Did Mal O'Brien ever have a Hawaii dude coming all the way to Vermont? I don't know. No. Maybe. Yeah. Um, great point. Great it was point. just her and Hopper, and her and Hopper are freaking miserable. Apparently. Un, un, uh, unclarified. Hey, here it is. But here, Andrew Stein, here's the thing. If Matt has a championship, uh, for, where's, I can't find my fucking arrow. Where the fuck is my arrow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it's on one of the three screens. No, yeah. no, no. It's never going to be enough with Bill. Hunter, you're going to know Bill Leahy. He runs faster than you, too. If Matt has a championship formula, then why hasn't he produced a champion? Because they don't want to do the formula. They keep falling out. They keep they like swim in the uh, deep end. Yeah, they 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 um they, um, they get mentally off balance. Hey, I, I'm gonna give uh, Matt a bone. He's better than Bergeron. Mm. No, Bergeron. Bergeron. Wait, Bergeron why would you say two that? Games champions because because Katrin did better once she. Bergeron could that. make Hunter a champion. Bergeron could I not. Think Bergeron do. completely screwed the pooch. Do you remember when he had this whole <laughs> stable of athletes and everyone just left him? Yeah. Like, what happened? You can only hear it about the process so many times before you want to kill yourself. Well, I bet you used to be a good coach and then he tried to get into business and then he just stopped paying attention because everybody left him fast. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, um, Amanda Barnhart was uh, singing HWPO's praise. Trista Patrick, no, because the formula for Matt isn't the same formula for the other athletes. No, here's the thing. They're not doing the formula. The formula for, for Matt, 100%. for Rich, and for Tia is all the same. I don't get Be what the whole train point of this conversation fucking is. alone and kick ass. <laughs> yeah, why what? would you think that oh, going I, over I, the I, HWPO is not going to mean you have to train like Matt? Like, that's so stupid. Like, if you're going to show up in that house, you know what you're going to encounter. Yeah. It's a five times cross yeah. the games champion who has a very world class beatdown. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like, mean, here's like, the thing. Also, so. Like pe people end up looking at the end result all the time. So they're like, Oh, I want a podcast. So I could talk to all these people and interview and be big on the internet. And then they get 10 shows in and they're like, fuck, this is a lot of hard work. And it didn't get yeah. the traction. I thought it would just same with Matt. They see him be the five-time champion and get all the accolades and they go, fuck, I want to do that. And then they show up to the dungeon and they go, damn, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Hey dude, imagine dude. how much harder it would be if they had to edit their own stuff as well. Cause you know, they ain't I doing that. I whoop the shit out of college, uh, college level athletes all the time. Like they graduated like D one full ride. When these kids leave these little bubbles where they have these little crews that they hang out with and they're fed perfectly, they're massaged all day long. They have a coach and then they have to go out on their own. They fall apart. It's really interesting. If you take Are you somebody they out of their, stay where they're at, I think probably, I mean, if you take a little 18 year old girl out of her house and you send her over to, um, you know, that grinder, like I'll never forget, dude, when I went from high, like my home in Connecticut and I had to go to military school for the summer, that was war. And that was like, you're just like, whoa, this is a different level of humanity. The same thing probably happened to them. And like, if you're not used to it, the pressure is too high. Intensity is too high. Mm -hmm. Hey, what do you know about EPO? You should take it. Why? Uh, I mean, you're already experimenting with other stuff. You might as well, well go full board. I mean, other than the fact that obviously I should try it out. What do you think about it? What do you know about it? I mean, I think that it's 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 like if you can use something, it's the thing. But the thing, like, I, like why people, do you it is I, the I, thing, right? Why, why hey, you, is every, you people, is every CrossFit people, athlete people, on it? Is every CrossFit no, athlete on it? No. Here's this is where what the makes conversation. It their thing? You can't just say that. Like, what makes? I think that thing? they are. You guys won't even let me finish a fucking sentence. Shut you up! You, <laughs> keep, you, you keep detracting from what it well, is. I'm not, dude. I just, right, I just started right, talking. Let him go. Let all right, go. All right, if you guys want, so erythro poetin, it basically is going to give your body the ability of carrying more oxygen. More oxygen, more fuel, more capacity. And like, you know, the other option that you have is taking blood and taking it out of your body and then pumping it back in. Now you have more blood volume. More blood volume means you're carrying more oxygen. So fuck that. Just take the drugs. That sounds like too much work. The other uh, but, way. but here's the thing, dude. When you get to this level of like these real things, it's advanced. Like it's it's advanced. You can't just fuck around and take these things like lackadaisically. This is the most dangerous drug to take, right? It's like one of them. Yeah, dude. So like, so what these guys, you recognize that they were doing, especially when they were blood doping and using this stuff, 
they would have a heart rate monitor they would sleep with. And if their heart rate dropped too low, which means that they could have a heart attack because the viscosity of their blood was too thick, they now all of a sudden would have to get up and get on a spin bike for like an hour in the middle of the night to generate a higher heart rate. It's dangerous stuff. Oh, you want to know it's wacky? Oh, dude. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. Why do you have to get up in the middle of the night to do that? Sorry, I was texting. So basically, if you're carrying more blood, the viscosity of your blood changes. It's also the same reason why, if you looked at the liver king, why he had that reddish tint to his blood. Um, yeah. And oh. basically, these people, when you're getting all of these thicker and more intense levels of blood, you're, you're putting yourself at a real oh. stress. So your body, oh. it only has a heart the size of this iPhone. Now, all of a sudden, if it's generating heat for a house that's twice as big, like you're just you're putting yourself at danger. You're putting yourself at danger and you don't want to put yourself in that position unless you really know what the fuck that you're doing. Are you ready? So for this? If, I, I if, got <laughs> if you look at Balco, if you Balco is the guy who got caught for all this stuff. Yeah. If you look at his receipts and the receipts from the people that were paying him to give him like medical treatments, they're insanely high. This isn't like frat boy, like I've got 50 extra dollars a week, so I'm gonna, of daddy's money. I'm going to get some tests. Like this is some serious shit. And like the easiest way to cheat in the CrossFit games, and I know people that have done it, is you're taking what's called a bronchioli enhancer. You take an inhaler before you go. It opens up your body's ability to absorb um, uh, oxygen into the lungs, and it's very, very cheap. It's very cheap. And, and you, you can get a script for it. You, you have a TEU. Workout. What's that? You can get a script for it. Yeah, it's not hard at all. I mean, Damn. it's really hysterical. Go Google the articles about how like 70% of the Nike running team all had asthma inhalers. <laughs> the number one athletes running in the United States, if not the world, were now all using asthma. It was fucking crazy. And – and they're all like, oh, man, I'm having asthma-induced exercise issues. I'm like, no, you're fucking cheating. <laughs> so – and that's why Alberto Salazar, I think, is permanently banned. Like, there's some pretty crazy-ass shit. That's a beautiful name, Alberto Salazar. Alberto Salazar, yeah. Former OnlyFans superstar. <laughs> but I think if Hiller's the kind of guy where he's got the money, and um, if he's got the money and he's able to pull it off, he should do it. That girl looks like she's 14. That girl's yeah. a, a runner. She's they all look like they're 14. Look at her close. name is Fleshman. My God, that's a tough name. Oh, that's that's rough. That right, guys, should I be your get, name. I got to get the heck out of here. I, I love you, Fleshman. Hunter. Thank you. Come on my show and I'll kiss your ass anytime, buddy. That's I had a really good time hanging out. out. I miss you guys. You yeah. too, Hunter. Hey, when are you going to be? I'm going to go to L.A. soon. I'm going to party with Sarah. Let's it's party. Rage, dude. When's your next race? Tell me when your next race is. I'm going to go compete in Cologne in April. So that's okay. over in Yemeni. That's where I'm going to smash the world record. You guys are going to watch from fucking fire get lit up. EPO, baby. Nice. All right, guys. It's great seeing you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. dude. All Thank right. You. I have to go. You know what's crazy is my kid. My, well, my kid did. My kid set a world I, I record. I, yeah. I, what if I. What You want me to call the. Uh, my kid just called the. What yeah, I got a, I got a thought on the hunter thing right there. Yeah, go ahead. He, he essentially just said that he needed, or he's not not he needed, but people need to set alarms to wake up when their blood viscosity gets too high and their heart rate drops too low and they sleep. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. when you think about what else that might mean, it means that you need to do more aerobic activity more often in order to. Oh shit! Oh shit! And, and, and you know what's crazy. I had to give blood once. I don't even think I've told you that. Right? My my red blood cell count goes up, and that happens when you start taking tests. Yeah. And the first thing I noticed is I started to feel like I had to work out. Right. I had I had this like inner craving. I I like and when I worked out, I felt 10 times better. Hmm. My red blood cell I know what you're up. saying. I, I know what you're saying. Anxious. I'm like, oh, like, what's wrong with me? And then I'd go ride the bike for 20 minutes. And it's like, oh, I feel like a million bucks. I feel great. Now imagine that in the morning, at noon, oh, I got to work out. I just got to work out. I just got to work out. It's an addiction. I'm kind of like that. I'm kind of like that, but I don't take EPO. Out. And I think everyone's like that to a degree. But then I also, when I get blood, and I felt great too. But what you're saying is you need that. Right. Haley, hi. 
I wonder how many people are going to connect those dots on what I'm alluding to. I know what you're alluding to. I know, are you there, I, babe? <laughs> Hello? Testing. I'm going to put it in the Hello. private chat, which is just going to be the normal chat. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> I, don't put it in the normal chat. Hello, caller. Hello. Private Haley. chat in the normal Hello? chat. <laughs> Haley, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? Hey. Mm. No, they can't hear you. Hey. Hey. Mm. Mm. hey um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, interesting i think i think will you ask will you call luke and find out what's going on i think avi scheduled okay. a skate appointment without telling me Obvious. Obvious. How would he, do that? he was just talking to him yesterday i heard it from like the side like i was i was like barely listening and then Avi's like yeah i'll skate with you tomorrow okay okay i'll call him right now okay okay and find out where okay bye i will bye i just always got to be doing something mm always have to be doing something oh dude there's there's uh, there's others who there's so many that just have to be working out yeah i mean it's a who's who of who yeah we would say yeah. that yeah. yeah i mean i've heard it yeah i would i would love to try all that shit i want to get on trend and epo and just hey fucking... no trend. ow i just hurt my shoulder flexing i was talking to keith knapp yesterday as every, everyone when I see him in person, they want to know. They're like, so what's the biggest thing you've noticed? And I go, well, like, hey, I pulled a 605 deadlift this morning, and I haven't touched a wow. heavy bar in a long time. You think you're going to beat John Young in the open? Smash him. Really? Nice. Dude, he took 50th in the RX division at the fittest experience. And every time he posts a lift on Instagram, I'm like, cut that shit out. What is wrong with you? Stop it. You're not doing what you need to do to get better, and he has yeah. no chance against me. Yeah, I, I could. I, I haven't worked out in like three months, and I'll still whoop him. And I love Damn. John, by the way. That doesn't mean I, I'm not. I know. I, I love John. John's a man. It, it, if if me. Matt Fraser is a ten, what is Taylor Self as an athlete? Peak Fraser. Yeah, peak Fraser versus Taylor. Peak Taylor. Eight point nine. Oh really? Eight point nine. And what's John Young? Six point two. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Which is good, okay. but... Okay. Well, you want to know what you are? Yeah, what am I? On the Fraser scale? And a yeah. zero, what's a zero? Like, um, you're, like maybe it's just like sign up for the open? <clears throat> oh, oh, shoot, I'm here. Oh, yeah, you're here. You're, you're, you're like a 2.8. You're, you're like a 2.8. I'm a 2.8. Okay. That's yeah. a generous score. I, think, score. I think I'm a five. I'm half of what wow. the game's at. You're not, you know, you're not that close to Wow, five, five, huh? Yeah. No. You can't oh, be yeah, that. You can't be that close to John Young. You think I'm less than half a man? No. I'm what? Yeah, you're on. saying a 2.8 is like I'm one third of a man. Call her high, but I'm getting me and Hiller's relationships. Being hey, what's up? Here. I'm like, like an eight, eight seven. seven. I got a question. You're you're you are Hiller. not a you're fucking 50. eight or seven. I don't know who you are. Shut your pie hole. Yeah, I am. No, you're not. I am. I'm an no eight or seven. Way. No, you're yeah. not. No way. Totally. You, so you're better than John Young at CrossFit. You're going to three five. Oh. This is this is my own standard. Oh. This is nobody else's standard. Oh. I'm just saying I'm a I'm an eight. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I'll give you that. Yeah, like the attractiveness. Okay. Sorry, oh. I thought you were on the universal scale. The man's standard. He's got standards. For I like sure. It. No, 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 I'm not on that. How can we picked up? I do have a question for Hiller. Yeah, we, am I able to move the topic to the uh, to the open briefly? Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Is this the guy who's asking why I'm pumping the open? What? No. No. Ask your question. You're humping okay. <laughs> No, I'm 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 a I'm a Hiller fan, and I have a question for Hiller um, about training for the Open. My question is this: I haven't, well, not really training for the Open as much, but I have an issue, and I was wondering if you have any idea if there's anything I can do in the next two weeks. If there happens to be ring muscle ups like there were last year, I've done twenty three point one about twenty seven times. And on most of my, every two Saturdays or so, I'll do an old open workout. I'm right around 90% on most of them. On 23.1, I think it was, with the ring muscle-ups at the end, every single time I'm done with like four minutes left, I cannot hit a ring muscle-up. I hit 10 fresh. I could do it right now. I can also hit 10 right after that workout on the bar, but I can't do it on the rings. I cannot hit one. Wait, you is can do muscle ups, looking, but when you, you, you on can that do workout, training. you can't do any. Is that what you're saying? Yep. That doesn't make any sense. Yep. What, what's killing you? The toes. It takes bars? about four minutes of recovery before I can hit one or two. And and the only thing I can think is that 
my biggest i've done crossfit for like two and a half years so i just started really honing how in old are you and how many thing. steroids have you taken <laughs> i'm 37 uh no absolutely yeah no i'm 37 and i have taken trt i had to get off of trt because um fertility issues so what you're going to need to do is i'm assuming your shoulders are occluding quite a bit and you're going to want to break up the okay. bar more than you think and the wall balls more than you think. I'm going to guess oh, you're getting more too much them. And also, what is your thought process as you go through your cleans? Like, uh, If I were to watch you doing okay. cleans, I bet you're like super wound up up here. And you're going to need to really relax into like your lower back. And that sounds really weird. But the more you can take okay. tension away from your upper body, the only reason – and it, I haven't seen you do a muscle up, but I bet you can't turn over. Yeah, sure. Is, is, is it is it the turnover? 100%. Like you, you get like all power. One hundred percent. So you should get to the muscle ups with two minutes left, and you really got to do everything you can okay. to try to release tension from your body, starting with the row. Like really try to drop everything towards your hips the whole workout, and then break okay. up a lot of stuff, and try to remove all that blood from your shoulders. Okay, so rather than do it with four. You know, if I'm finishing with four minutes left and I'm hustling through all that, you would actually slow down is what's and break ruining you. Right. The hustling is ruining okay. you. So I, I would Got bet it. that you get two um, minutes left, take 30 seconds, and then you could do no no less than three at a time. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, that, that was my question. That's been my – Okay. Yeah, I guess they've been the bane of my existence. I'm like, dude, if we – there's no way they repeat that one, I don't think, but – I would, if I saw that as a repeat workout, I'd just, I'd lose it. And that is your fitness tip of the day. Thank you, caller. Okay, guys. Oh, no, uh, I want to know what you get. Comment sometime. I'm, I'm stressed. Uh, I got to go. Hey, dude. Didn't, Bye. aren't you going to shit a little bit how I knew that dude had taken steroids? Yeah. How did you know? Oh, because he had too much, oh, too much blood flow and couldn't get through the train. Yeah. Hey. All right. Fair enough. He wow. said he's done 10 <laughs> before and he had four yeah. minutes and couldn't do a muscle up. There's one reason. And no you're one like, else is telling you that answer. You, you're like a real coach. Hi, Caleb. Hey. And the only hey. coach who talks about steroid stuff. All right. Love you guys. Stay tuned for the news. Good luck, Mal, on your journey. I'm uh uh congratulations on being in Hawaii. Have fun. Uh, John Woolley, stop being a baby. Stop tattletailing. You're a cancer to the uh, community when you tattletale. Don't do that. Don't be a bitch. And um, thank you, Hiller, for your wise words of coaching. Sousa, thank you for doing the Lord's work um, at uh, CrossFit Livermore. And uh, Caleb, may the Shadikin, uh be blessed. May your hands work fast and blessing. furious in order to uh, bring that. a domicile to uh, bang your wife. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, bye-bye.